Have you guys seen that video where that mom is making grilled cheese for both of her kids? When I asked my toddlers what they wanted for lunch, they both wanted a grilled cheese. So that's exactly what I got started on. I got started by making my bread. Goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga, mom. I, I want grilled cheese. Yes, my child, you may have grilled cheese once I take six hours to cook it from scratch. Goo goo gaga, thanks, mom. Goo goo gaga gaga. I don't know. This is a really simple, no need recipe. You put all of your dry and wet ingredients into a bowl, give it a mix, and let it rise for two hours. Did she say that she's got to wait two hours for the bread to rise? Are her toddlers going to remember that they even asked for grilled cheese at that point? And you know, as much as I want to make fun of this, I think that I just wish this is how I got to eat when I was a toddler. When I asked for a grilled cheese, my dad would just take a couple slices of white bread, a couple Kraft singles, throw them on the George Foreman grill, done. Did you guys know that George Foreman has five sons and all of them are named George Foreman? He has nicknames for all of them. He's got George Jr., Monk, Big Wheel, Red, and Little Joey. If you wanted the kid's name to be Joey, you should have named him Joey. Don't name him George Foreman for the fifth time. And yes, if you were wondering, he has a daughter named Georgina Foreman also. I combined some milk citric acid and ran it in my pot. Let that heat up and then once it's solidified, I'd return it back to the heat and stir it gently before letting all the curds drain and then stretching it out. And this is nothing new for Nara, but these TikToks every single time make me laugh how complicated they are. She's making the cheese, slops the cheese curds into a bowl. Oh, my kids love pesto, so I made pesto from scratch. Oh, now I gotta make the garlic butter from scratch that I'm gonna put on the toast. At this point, I would not be surprised if she was mixing all of it together in a bowl that she crafted at the local pottery studio. And of course, the goddamn sandwich looks good. I don't think anyone was wondering that. But here today, I'm not talking about the food being made in that kitchen. I wanna talk about the head chef. This is Nara Smith. She is a model and a mother living in Los Angeles with her husband and her two children. And at least to me, she's one of the most confusing and mysterious people on TikTok. And also one of the fastest growing because she gets like 20 million views on every single post she makes. And this is kind of what Nara does in general. Her main thing on TikTok is that she makes these elaborate meals for her family. My husband was on his way out to get a cookies and cream soft serve, but I told him I'll just make it for him instead. So that's exactly what I did. I started by making my Oreos by combining some flour, cocoa powder, butter, some sugar and egg, and then Form letting that all go until it all comes to get started. And I have a baking tissue that was nice. She sort of puts a spin on this trad wife trend that has been going around on TikTok the past couple of years, where a woman will sort of show off the aesthetic of a wife who lives at home and advocates for traditional roles in the household. And normally this is less about the actual relationship dynamic that comes from being a trad wife. And it's more about kind of the clean cut aesthetic of a 50s housewife without all the bad stuff. Nara's whole shtick is that she sort of talks in this like subdued, calming tone while she whips together a super complicated version of a regular person meal that a family would have. Last night before bed, my toddlers could not stop talking about donuts, so I decided to wake up and make them lemon glazed donuts for breakfast. And I wanna make it clear that I'm not really making this video to say that what Nara is doing is like bad or that she should stop doing it. The more I watched her videos, I actually feel like I started to like her and her family more. And I wouldn't even say that what Nara is doing is explicitly trad wife. I think she just enjoys cooking a lot. And I saw another TikTok kind of explaining how it's a very American idea to be appalled when someone makes a dish from scratch like this because we're not really used to it. So I've kind of been understanding that perspective more where I think there's a lot of people just very quickly writing Nara off as someone who is just like hypnotized and serving her husband or whatever. When in reality, she's just a mom that really likes to cook food. And her videos, I think are pretty fun to watch. And in 2020, Nara married her now husband, Lucky Blue Smith, who is also just like her, a model that is signed to IMG. And if you feel like you've heard the name Lucky Blue Smith before, it's because he has been in the spotlight for quite some time now. Lucky grew up in Utah as a part of a Mormon family, and when he was 10 years old, he was scouted as a model along with his three sisters, whose names are Cheyenne Starley, Daisy Clementine, and Piper America Smith. 
four Mormon kids with weird ass names getting scouted to go be child models. That's not predatory and weird at all. So Lucky and his whole family moved to Los Angeles in 2010, and by the time 2015 came around, he was on magazine covers all over the world. Now he had one marriage before this. Back in 2017, he had his first child with his former partner, and he named her um, Gravity Blue Smith. And then in 2020, Lucky Blue Smith married Nara Pellman. She became the Nara Smith we all um, love today. And now they have two kids and one on the way. So that history lesson brings me to one main point of interest. With Nara Smith's extravagant lifestyle and the aesthetic that her and her husband bring to the internet, it begs one question. What could these two have possibly named their children. These are some baby names that are on my list that I won't be using. For reference, our kids have pretty unique names. My daughter's name is Rumble Honey Smith and my son's name is Slim Easy Smith. Rumble Honey and Slim Easy Smith? You thought George Foreman was bad at naming his kids? What the hell is going on here? So my question is what could possibly be the other names that they would have picked for their kids? They've got another one on the way So obviously they got to prepare for whatever Goofy name they're gonna come up with next. For a girl's name. I really love the name Odie, Pepper, Dawn. They're all really cute to me that, well, Those are like Farm animal names. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to all my viewers named to Odie, Pepper or Dawn. Dawn really isn't like that weird. I think they need to add a middle name to really elevate it. Maybe Dawn Soap Smith. Soap is like totally a name that they would choose for one of their children. Soap, get your ass over here. I really like Cherry as a middle name. My husband doesn't really like that name. I also like Bubble as a second name. That might be- Dude, if you're naming your kid Bubble, what, what's going on? This is a human child you're naming. It's not your goddamn Tamagotchi. And I love the name Pear as a first name. And then for boys... I'm why? Why not? <laughs> you know, at this point, why not? Name them Pear. And then for boys, I love the name Frosty still, if you guys remember. Bro, Frosty? No, come Um, what else was there? Sunny, Silver, Zen. Those are a few, but we won't be using them for this baby. We won't be using them for this baby, but catch us in the next one, because this new one's about to pop out, and we're gonna name him... We're gonna name him Laundry. I feel like they'd name their kid Laundry. I would have rather her named all those kids George Foreman. Hold on, I gotta tell you guys a secret real quick. Hold on. I'm in a band called Queef Jerky, and we are traveling around the country this June, 18 different cities, one special guest, Lots of cool surprises, merch, VIP treatments, everything. Go to the link in my description to buy tickets now for the Queef Jerky Countrywide World Tour. Uh, we're going to be playing our new album that's coming out in a month. That's it. Back to the video. Let's get to the meat of the situation, though. In 2020, People Magazine covered Nara and Lucky's wedding, and they said that Nara was 24 years old at the time. But now, four years later, the Daily Mail is reporting that she's like 23 years old. So that really begs the question, how old is Nara Smith? Is she a 28-year-old married with two children and one on the way, like we would have believed from People Magazine? Or is this a 23-year-old who married this guy when she was 18 and they didn't want it to be weird, so they lied about her age? so it didn't seem like Lucky Blue Smith was marrying a girl that just turned 18 years old. Either way, I think that the truth about the age has been dodged a few times to avoid some uncomfortable conversations. I'll leave it at that. My more important question is, oh, wow, what's, what's she cooking? What is she cooking in there? What's she cooking? That's, I don't know. As an influencer in my mid-20s living in Los Angeles, I feel a lot more lost in my life than Nara seems to be. Bunch of good food in a fancy house with a bunch of people with weird ass names? Sign me up, I'll drive over to their house right now. I think that if I put on my best trad wife impression and I make the food that she makes, then it will somehow psychologically hypnotize me 
into a state of serenity and peace. Hopefully a piece of food, a piece of meat that I can eat. Now I wanted to find a recipe that would challenge me to find my inner trad wife. And when I found out that Nara has actually cooked one of my favorite foods, boy was I ready to go. Let's make some lasagna from scratch. It's lasagna. That's right. And lasagna is easy to make. It's just freaking noodles and sauce and stuff. So I already think I have most of the ingredients for it. So I say, let's go knock that thing out. What's up, you hungry little trolls? Who's ready to eat some lasagna from scratch? I don't really know what the recipe is, but we're going to follow along with Nara's tutorial here and see if we can make it. I started off by making my mozzarella cheese. I added some milk, citric acid, and ran it to my pot. Let that sit. What the hell is that? Hey, guys. <laughs> I need milk, citric acid, and rennet. What store is going to have citric acid and rennet? It's not the 19 goddamn 30s. But I did get milk. But apparently, ultra-pasteurized milk does not work for mozzarella cheese. But I think I figured it out. <laughs> and then sliced it all up, transferred my curds to a cheesecloth to let all the whey drain out. Let that sit for about five to- A lot of stuff about making the mozzarella cheese. That's like a big part of it. Then I made a really simple pasta dough with some eggs, flour, olive oil, and salt. That's what I'm talking about. This looks like it's actually fun. <laughs> that was like, the worst I've ever cracked an egg before. Like, couldn't you do it in a bowl? <laughs> Nara wouldn't do it in a bowl. Just think about it. This will soon be beautiful sheets of pasta. How does it look when Nara does it? Kneaded that until it was all smooth and then wrapped it in some plastic wrap to rest. I feel like it's sort of making a pasta type vibe. I just want to take a bite out of it already. <laughs> I can't, I don't even want to wait to cook this because I just want to take a big bite out of it. We started chopping up some carrots really finely, some celery and some onion. You can use purple onion or white onion. I just purple onion and carrots and celery? This was lasagna. Not the local salad bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, we got to go to the store and get some purple onion. <laughs> What's up guys? I didn't find really anything at the store except for just normal mainstream carrots. Just normal ass carrots that you'd find at the normal grocery store. Nara said that this is her favorite part of the process, the chopping. My favorite part of cooking any meal is chopping. He's like so aesthetic right now though. The orange with the orange and the orange. Yeah. And then I brown my meat in my Dutch oven. Add my vegetables, some tomato paste, some crushed tomatoes. I don't know how we forgot. Ground beef, crushed tomatoes, tomato paste, <laughs> herbs. How did we forget that all of that was in lasagna? I thought it was just pasta and sauce or something. <laughs> Bless you. So there we went, off to find the final ingredients we needed for the lasagna. And I will not lie, as I started walking through the store and started seeing a lot of the pre-made ingredients that we could have just used for this recipe, the temptation was really putting a lot of pressure on me. And I was just one second away from grabbing the frozen lasagna and just heading home. And then I browned my meat in my Dutch oven. I thought a Dutch oven was when you fart under the bed sheet covers and you, make, you, really, you fart in there. I'm surprised that Nara Smith didn't go out to the local farm and slay the cow herself. This is like food that Wallace and Gromit would eat. Gromit, Gromit, you want to eat some uh, lasagna, mate? Where is the can opener? I don't know. So let's let this bad boy simmer for a bit. While I prep my lasagna sheets, I cut my dough into eight pieces and then rolled them out into rectangles. So she made lasagna sheets out of her pasta. I seriously don't know how I'm going to make sheets out of this because I don't have a pasta machine. 
and I have about half the pasta she has. I know we're trying to go everything from scratch here, but we might need to use a little bit of pre-made pasta sauce to make this work, am I right? <laughs> when it was about time to assemble, I made a quick bechamel sauce to go in between my layers. She just goes, I, I thought I'd make a quick bechamel sauce to go in between the layers. What are you talking about? I have like no pasta. I should have made more pasta. I just don't know how much flatter I can get it without going to extreme measures. Huh? Let's pry it out. It looks kind of exactly the same as it did before I ran it over with the car. Let's take some of this. So the carrots, you know, the carrots could definitely be smaller. Okay, then I gotta do a layer of pasta, which I think I might just use the pasta that we ran over the car with, but stretch it and then sort of like, I swear I'm normally not this inept when it comes to cooking food. I think usually I have a recipe in front of me. I hope it doesn't taste like a car tire. And then started putting it all together. I put down a layer of the ragu, some bechamel, then my lasagna sheets. Okay. That seems good. And then one last layer of cheese. And now we wait for the lasagna to be done. And then I popped that in the oven for 35 minutes and pulled it out. And it came out so perfect. Hey everyone, the lasagna is done. I may have left it in a little bit too long. But let's check on it. So I guess we'll just let this bad boy sit for a second and then we'll we'll cut it open and see what's what's what, what, what it's all about. Let's do this thing, guys. When I make food, it's definitely not about the presentation, you know. It's not it's not about oh does it look like lasagna. It's about does it taste like home. I don't really know how I feel about this. I think the pasta, I mean, if you look at that, the problem is the car didn't really do its job. I don't think I'd feed this to my toddlers, though. Wait, you should try some. No, please don't make me eat it. I ran it over with your car. I ran over the pasta with my car. I've got egg salad. egg salad on mine. <laughs> no, that's the crispy cheese. <laughs> I don't want to cook anymore. I just want to play Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh, Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it so much that you want to see me in person, my band Queef Jerky is going on tour this June. We are going to be going to 18 different cities. We have a very special guest planned who will be traveling on the road with us, a good friend of ours, and we have new music coming out in June that we want to play for everybody. So the tickets are in the description down below. You should come check it out, whether or not you know our music. You will. You will know it. Soon. Okay, that's everything. Bye.